So welcome to the Pitch BTCC programme. I've got a special guest with me here today. I've got Gary Ailes, ex-British touring car racer, team owner, general superstar, <laughs> all-round <laughs> superstar, I, I think the term yeah. is. And then also we've got Jack Goff, current BTCC racer, race winner, podium finisher, and also uh, uh, bringing a car up, you know, which is a brand new car this year, but bringing it up through the field and getting some good results out there. So we're going to have a chat with Jack later on in the programme. But first of all, we're going to have a chat with Gary Ailes, find out what it was like back in the 90s when, when he was young. Good old days. Good yeah, old days, when, yeah. when he was young. When men were men. He I has think. actually got a medallion on. I didn't <laughs> want to mention it. I said I wouldn't mention it, but I have done. So, uh, Gary, yes. you started out in single seaters. No karting career? No. Well, no, none at all. I just jumped straight into Formula Ford, uh, a Reynard RF84, I think it was, but I, uh, in 85. So I basically started in 85 with an 84 car, no karting. Um, it was my dad's dream, really, for me to be a racing driver, I think. And the old man made a bit of money and he bought a Formula Ford and that was it. So I had no clue, really. <laughs> I remember turning up at a test thinking and, and you know, just didn't know what I was doing, didn't it? which was no way to go around a circuit or nothing. And it just went from there. And I guess I happened to be all right at it because, uh, you know, I did quite well. I finished second in the uh, Star of Tomorrow Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason Elliott won it. Yeah, I was yeah. second. I can't remember who was third. And, yeah, we went from there. Then I got Mike Thompson, gave me an opportunity in the quest with Johnny Herbert. <laughs> yeah, so okay. part of the deal was yeah. we had to go into the factory. So Johnny and I would go into the factory and build cars. Because you're an agricultural <laughs> engineer, it's easy for me to say. Yeah, um, I was. Easier, easier for you to do it than me to say. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. No, that's, I mean, I had no, no idea about being a racing driver or owning racing teams and all the rest of it. I was an agricultural engineer. That's what I did from school. You know, I left school, you know, it's 15, I think it was, or 16, whatever. And yeah, I was a mechanic. And then the old man, like I say, made a bit of money. Not quite sure how he made it. We, we never actually asked that question. Well, I watched Clarkson's farm last night. <laughs> yeah. For right, the okay. first time, just putting yeah. in there, and I see how you make the money. Yeah, yeah. the way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the crops, yeah. Never a, never a poor farmer, as I say. <laughs> <coughs> I just just to fix their tractors, which that's was... It, uh, it. And so yeah. then after Formula Ford, you had Formula 3? Yeah, I did Formula Ford uh, for two years, so then the RAC, so that was against... I can remember, I think, one of my best races was at Silverstone in a Reynard. Um, sorry, not in a Reynard, in a Van Diemen yeah, yeah. Uh, with AMT Racing, who I was with, with in Formula Ford, against Roland Ratzenberger. Okay. And I remember it was a fantastic race. There was like three of us, but in the in the in the day then you just have to tow. It was just a tow. So just you, you really didn't swapping. want to be leading yeah. on the last lap. And I think I was like third or fourth on the last lap. And I won the race, and Roland was second. Um, but clearly he's not with us now anymore. But uh, he was a super bloke actually, and, yeah, a, yeah, and yeah. a very um, a very good racer. You know, very fair yeah, if yeah. you like. So so that and then Formula Four 2000 in a Reynard, but I only did uh, like five races with that. The BBC Grandstand series. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave Coyne. I was quick on pole and all the rest of it, but I didn't win. I might have won one race, but I was racing against Dave Coyne, who was in the Swift. Well, Dave Coyne still, he, I saw him racing the other week. Uh, yeah, historics. the boy is good. Is it? Yeah. I he mean, looks he, exactly the same. I know. And Maybe he, slightly less hair. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but he's still red. Yeah, yeah, that's somehow. Right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Not quite sure how, but he still is. Yeah. I mean, he's. I'm crazy at 30, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just right. a Yeah, girls. wait. Uh, <laughs> you haven't been in motorsport long enough. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Dave was great. He's a quick driver, actually, a clever racer, and he was just, he got me, so I finished second anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, Formula 3, a bit of Formula 3 with uh, Marvin Humphreys. Oh, okay, so that's speed. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mar yeah. Mar Mar I mean, Marvin was great to me, because we didn't really have any money, and uh, he put a car together for me, which was great. So what year would that be? That was in, um, I broke my legs in 87, so it would have been 86. That wasn't Marvin, 87. Right? No, no, no. Just checking. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't pay. He was my team boss as well at one point. I, yeah. I didn't pay a bill, and ended up with two broken legs. <laughs> That's another story with John yeah. McDonald and Mick Ralph, but anyway, maybe we shouldn't go into that one. When I drove his, <laughs> drove his form of three. We, we did have to go through a few things of what we could talk about and yeah. what we couldn't talk about a bit okay. before the programme, so it, 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 there's a couple of things we can't talk about. I will, tell you, well, I will tell you about John McDonald and Mick Ralph, it's quite funny actually, because they everybody knows them in the, in the industry, if you like, certainly not to be messed with. And I qualified really bad at Snetterton, and um, he locked me in the motorhome for four and hours. what car was that in? That what was, was that? a Rolt. Oh, right, okay. It was right. a Rolt, yeah, it was a calibre car. Paul, oh, okay. Warwick, Paul yeah, Warwick yeah. drove it first, and okay. then left, and I, I went in there. And uh, he locked me in the motorhome, and he said, you need think about it. Is do you want to be do you want to be a racing driver or a green grocer's assistant? I went, 
Yeah, you know, like a bit of a thing about it. <laughs> you know. But I was frightened to come in. If you qualified really bad, I just get driving round and round and round. <laughs> yeah. See John McDonald looking at you, go, yeah, I'll stay out a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, yeah, and then I did about three Formula Three thousand. We're whizzing through it because I've done bits in between, yeah, yeah, yeah. but. Um, Bit of Formula 3000. But They're then you British. got into touring cars. So then then uh, that was with Toyota? Yeah, Toyota, yeah, yeah, Andy yeah. Rouse. Yeah, um, yeah. I got an opportunity, and I have to thank Alan Gow a little bit on that one, because um, he, he helped me at the beginning with that, to get an opportunity with Andy. Yeah, yeah. And I, I tested, and, and it, it went OK. You know, Andy is a teammate. You don't really want him as a teammate, because he's quite good. Yeah, yeah. And um, not only that, it's you know my bat, my ball. <laughs> it was yes, his exactly. Team. Yeah. He, he knows how there. the car works. Doesn't yeah. He? <laughs> <laughs> can I have that engine? No. <laughs> um, you can have that one. <laughs> yeah, but I want that Dusty one. one in the corner. <laughs> the yeah. cover over it. Yeah, but I, want, I, don't, I don't want that one. Andy. Um, but great because I learned an awful lot with him. If you yeah, like, they yeah. put me on a full race probation period because I, I crashed. I think in, in testing. You know, like the first time I got in the car. Cause it, through the crane. good thing, is it? No, no, no it didn't really go. Savage back, back yeah, in the yeah, olden yeah. days, I'll call it. Yeah, it was pretty savage, I'll tell you. Looked in a motorhome. <laughs> yeah, you got Andy, <laughs> yeah, you got, look, look, look. Fans. <laughs> look at Andy Rouse <laughs> giving you the look, you know you've messed up. But Craners was always flat in everything, wasn't it, pretty much? And yeah, I thought yeah, it was yeah. flat in a touring car in 92. Yeah, 92. I was like, it's bound to be flat. Everything's flat around here, you know. I've driven a Formula 3 car, 3000, you know. Easy, innit? Get, got, got into the corner flat. I thought, Nah, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna work at all. So I just ended up in the barrier, basically, and the car was about three foot shorter. But you know that hurt. It hurt me. You know, physically, it hurt me a little bit. But there's nothing to when he's got when I got back to see Andy Rouse. Oh. Look, look at that me. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Just that. like you yeah. know, you know, the look was enough. You know? Right, right. He wasn't but happy. To, no, yeah, he yeah, wasn't yeah. happy at all. But then that season was a good season for you, wasn't it? Because it moved you on to. Uh, the next stage of your career, really, which was three seasons in the Italian, Italian Super, yeah, Super Turismo Championship. Yeah, which was, you had some incredible drivers in there. Yeah, it was amazing. Know, names that everybody would know. Yeah, like Lorini, Nanini, Tarquini, there's Modena, uh, Smoking Joe, Winklehoff. I mean, yeah, Emanuele Pirro, there's a lot of people. My teammate, Giovanardi, you know, they've always said, uh, Claudio Bello said to me, that who, who managed me, what, what looked after me when I was in Italy, he said, the problem with your career, Gary, is your teammates. I went, what? He said, they're all really good. So I had <laughs> Jovan Hardy, Johnny Herbert, you know, Andy Rouse. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, Mika Hakkinen when I was did Formula 3 yeah, with yeah. Dickie Bennett. And Dickie Bennett, is a, it was brilliant. Yeah, I was with him in 2016. Yeah, I got into his Formula 3 car. Nothing, no, nothing on Marvin at all, but I got into Dickie's Formula 3 car. was like, oh, right. So I did nothing different but qualified third as opposed to 12th or 13th. Little tiny details. Yeah. He's a fanatic and he and still is. Rody yeah, 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 yeah. Fincini was my engineer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but Dickie was brilliant to work with. I always you say know. it's no surprise that whatever car they put out, yeah, whether it's it, a 1 Series BMW or it, it doesn't matter. the other cars back in the day or the 3 Series, it rolls out. It's quick. It's quick. Yeah, no, he, he, they're, they're a great team to work with and yeah. they're still you know, a bit old fashioned if you like, but the way that Dickie does it. But it know. leads from the top, doesn't it? Yeah. If the main man, yeah. It's fanatical about it, and every little yeah, he's passionate, passionate about everything he's, he does. He's, so he, however long he's been doing it, so it's fifty years or so. Yeah. What I love about Dick Bennett is that his car wins or gets a podium. He's still got a tear in his eye. Yeah, at it, the podium. It, he's still he's still got that still got every it. single time. Yeah. Something yeah. else he's still got time. is all of his information on old cars yeah, as well. And yeah. in the truck, will be in a debrief, and he'll get out his information pack, clipboards yeah. from two thousand and eight. He'll, in he'll know what the weather was at Snet. Yep. Uh, on, you know, whatever it was testing. Yeah, I mean, he's a great yeah. guy. I never had the money to stay with him. So it was me and Mika Hakkinen that did the Super Prix thing, and I qualified and running second. And they used to have pit stops then for this particular meeting. They had a pit stop, and I had a, a dodgy pit stop. The wheel came off, basically, which is not great. So they're not good on three wheels. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I got nowhere. But uh, Mika won it, I think. But I was pretty close to Mika yeah, yeah, yeah. and in testing. So and then the, the Italian Super Tour, it, yeah, it, sounded, it sounded quite physical, both on the track and off the track. Yeah, 100% 100% was, because an Englishman in an Italian championship driving a French car, it went down really well. But um, yeah, they didn't mind getting the elbows out. I mean, yeah, if you, yeah. you, you'd never go on the outside of somebody because you would be in the wall. And um, I just learnt, really, so I just I used to give it back. And uh, I remember at Imola uh, with um, Emmanuele Pirro, um, how <coughs> it was for third place and I just did a Ron Hopeful down the inside, just basically batted him out of the way, finished third on the rostrum, you know, like that, and he was down below, absolutely fuming. And I remember he completely slagged me off on live television in Italy, 
That's all that. Thing is, you couldn't understand what he was saying. Yeah, <laughs> I could understand Italian. I just oh, okay, couldn't really, okay. really speak it very well. Right, but I right. knew that he had slagged me off. Uh, proper did me in. And uh, so the next race, I just fired him off. I <laughs> <laughs> got to the first corner. See, like, he went absolutely ballistic. <laughs> So but that made the uh, the relationship better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. We get on really well now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then after that, you came after that, which sounds you know brilliant because I think yeah. you came second in the championship. Yeah, I did, yeah. That's yeah. It. Then you came back to the UK with Andy Rouse again. As with the with, with the, the Nissan. With the, the Nissan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a private car, but not so not such a good year. No, the car wasn't wasn't brilliant really. But that was Andy in preparation that he was going to get the works deal. So we sort of there would. Hopefully, if you know, if I was good enough and they wanted me, then I could progress into the works team. I think um, a a Anthony Reid got it, yeah, didn't yeah, he, and yeah. somebody else. Anyway, Andy didn't get the deal. And me. then he went GT racing, which yep. ended up With racing at Le Mans, yeah. doing international yeah, GTs, yeah, which is pretty Mans, cool. Four times at Le Mans uh, with Ferrari, so the F40 LM which was uh, out of Maranello, so it's a works car, so in Italy. I can remember turning up at the test track. I mean, it's, you know, not many people get the opportunity yeah, to yeah. drive a Ferrari around the test track, I was quite, uh, oh crikey. And Montezemolo flew in in a helicopter. And I, he just, just like... What, just to see you? No, no, no. he was just, no, clearly not. He'd heard bad things from the touring car days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The hero had called him up <laughs> and said, what are you testing him for? Well, yeah, exactly. That was my Italian accent, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> and uh, he turned up and just, just sort of went, oh, hello, and you know, buggered off again. Obviously, he was there for something else. But uh, fantastic to drive for Ferrari, if you like, yeah, yeah. In, in the works thing. It, yeah. was, it was absolutely brilliant. And, great. and now you moved on to running your own company, Bespoke Well, Handling. I went to McLaren after that. Yeah, yeah. And then Longtail McLaren, so Le Mans, so the Lark car at McLaren. Oh, okay. so did, but the World Series. Yeah, so we yeah, did the yeah, World yeah, Series yeah. with it. It was brilliant. Ticked all the boxes. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Yeah. Very fortunate amazing. To, to, to do a lot of that. But yeah, then running, yeah, I had my own touring car teams. Lost a shed load of money. Of oh, course, yeah, I forgot about that bit. I forgot about that. That's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the bit you try and blank out. You blank mind. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same here. It's when you're, yeah, when you're, same. It's when you're a I feel really bad sat here now because <laughs> I'm the one that usually makes you spend the yeah, money. No, we're, we're actually only 30. Yeah, most exactly. This is what happens when this you're This is what happens. It's, yeah. But then, no, thanks very much, Gary. Yeah. What we do. So, thanks very much for Gary Ailes for all the story. There'll be lots more there after the break. So, th <laughs> so join us after the break. We'll be having a chat with Jack Gopp, see how his season's going and see how a sort of a guy from the current era of touring cars goes about his racing. Welcome back to Pitch BTCC. I'm here with Gary Ailes, ex-British touring car racer and team boss, and also with Jack Goff, current BTCC racer, potentially British touring car team boss in the future. No, um, I, I, don't, I think Gary and I would both yeah, advise no, not give you to some do advice that. On that yeah, later. that's yeah. right. We'll talk about that <laughs> during the programme. But Jack, you've had a great start to the season with the new Cupra. We have, yeah. Um, you know, expectations going into a new season with a brand new project is it's always tricky to sort of pinpoint where you expect to be at the first few weekends and you know we were thrown in the deep end a little bit obviously being drivers we all know we've got plenty of driver excuses I actually drive a book um, <laughs> it's not mine like Jason Plato you know <laughs> I have my own book but my engineer gave me a book once of driver excuses, excuses yeah. it's brilliant like no, no. understeer oversteer like you haven't got them all the full <laughs> yeah the full shebang I've got the whole yeah. book um, but all jokes aside like we went into Fruxton for the first weekend and you know that's on the hard compound tyre which to be honest we did no testing with pre-season Throw into the mix, it was raining on some uh, sessions, it was damp in others. The first lap we did in the hard tyre was race one, really. So, you know, it was a step into the unknown. And I think Fruxton's one of those tracks that really shows up any potential faults you have with the car. You know, it could be a tiny little thing, but it gets exaggerated at Fruxton with the high speed well, high nature. Speed, yeah. You know, it's bumpy and that sort of stuff. And, you know, we went into the first weekend just saying, right, let's finish the races. Come away with no damage. You know, thankfully my car, you know, we had no damage, but feel sorry for the team, you know, all the boys and girls at Team Hard that put in all the hard work over the winter. You know, Glyn Getty, bless him, he had a uh, race one, went okay, and then race two he got to turn one and ended up on his roof, which is was never the plan of a brand new car, so they rebuilt that one, but that's well, the I team boss element here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I chatted with Tony Gillam <coughs> just before, the, uh, on Saturday morning at the weekend, just at yeah. Snetterton, and they, because the car's new, it's a new Cupra, the panels weren't available for the car, or the ones that came through were the wrong side, or something like that, because it's so new. Yeah. So they actually had to get a, a new road car and cut it 
Did they really apart to put the panels in yeah. to get it right? But that's you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, but that's that's one of the downs. That's that's a team boss decision, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, are yeah. you going to get the car out? Are you not going to get the car exactly. out? Exactly. You, you have to you get could, it out at all costs. Yeah, really, that's right. That's right. People. So it's yeah. So it shows you you know it, when you've got a brand new car as well. There's not much you know not many spares about, so the, it's not not available. But but you had a great day at. Snapchat. We did, yeah, you know, sort of going off for the first weekend, we scored three points finishes, which was sort of more than we expected, really. We just wanted to finish the races and progress. And then we rolled out at Snet with pretty much the same setup as we ended at Fruxton, thinking, oh, look, we've made progress, here we go. And we rolled it out and we're like, I can't even drive this thing. Yeah. The thing's trying to kill me. Like, every time I hit the brakes, the thing was all over the place. And we had to almost start from scratch again because we're on the medium tyre and the soft. Um, and then we went back into FP1, sort of halfway through, and made some changes and the car improved. and. That's one of the biggest things with the new Cooper Leon. We had two seasons with the VWCC and bless it, you know, it had a hard life and it didn't matter what you threw at it, it could be a 500 pound spring, a thousand pound spring, it produced the same lap time. I mean, to the nearest 10th. Yeah. And it'd be so frustrating for me as a driver, but for the engineering department as well, you know, it's come up with these what amazing ideas. Do? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, we had a good... But you're restricted, aren't you? What you can and can't do. I mean, the damper's free. Dampers now. are free, yeah. It now, and yep. as a, okay. Well, we have to have the same damper, but valving and things like that is free. So that, um, springs are free. So you can play with that was on the rig. You yeah. Can, okay. There's a, there's a lot. There's a well. You got you got you got damper build and you have got springs, but you've yeah. also got you've all got a set subframe, haven't you? So you've got a set front subframe, set rear subframe, ah, and same wishbone, same hubs, same brakes, but. You've got a lot of changes with rear roll centres, yeah. front so roll centres. You can play centers. around with that. Cast a lot of cameras. difference makes a massive difference. Massive, yeah. massive. Okay. So that even though it's, it looks like it's quite restricted, yeah. it's actually not. It's still yeah. as much an engineer's. It's not a manufacturer's championship, but I would say it's an engineer's championship yeah, and a driver's yeah. championship. But that's changed, you know, from the from the, from the old days, if you like, because I, I can remember Andy um, when he. Clearly, he was a top team, so he had the choice of manufacturers, if you like. And I remember going to the workshop once, and there's like four engines lined up, and it's all from different manufacturers. So, what, what, you know, I'll, I'll go with the manufacturer with the best engine. Oh, okay. Because right. in that day, it was you know, maybe more about engine. I don't know. Yeah. Clearly, it's all about engine still, but it was a bigger thing about the engine and what you could do with it. Well, the engines like. are quite restricted. Now you are, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you know, if you had a Toyota block, was clearly better than whatever else he yeah, was looking yeah. at. So he knew that he could do more with this engine than he could with that yeah. one. You know, and then the other bit of it was different. So the important bit for him, if you like, was the engine. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, we run the stock. manufacture. Yeah, 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 yeah. But maybe that's different now, yeah. obviously. Yeah, we run the uh, the Swindon engine, which is like the the Toka Championship engine in our car. So, you know, we got what we get basically. That's yeah. what we've got. And there's a few different cars on the grid running that engine, which is it's a safe bet, especially with us building a new car. You know, we didn't really want to focus all of our attention on an engine program whilst trying to do a car at the same time because, you know, there's a lot of work designing these things from scratch, all the little bits and yeah. pieces and. Well, I think that's one of the strengths of the series, to be honest, rather than because you 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 haven't got a huge engine development budget. Yeah. You've got no, to do. That's right, yeah. You can rely on that, and you know it's going to be equalised. And you've got to say that the engine won the championship last year. Yeah. It's currently leading the championship with Ash Sutton. Yeah. You know, you've got to say that the engine's good. It's so, more of a plug and play thing. Yeah, you, know, exactly. you get your your lump, you bolt it in. Okay, you can design your cooling pack around your bodywork to suit. And really, you know, you're going to be somewhere near pretty much straight out of the blocks, a little bit of cooling and things like that. So what like makes that. the biggest difference then? Because I think the Ford Focus is a, is a quick, is a really good chassis this year, isn't it? The engine's very it's strong on the Ford. It's drivable. Like so Drivability is that That's not a standard engine, that, or what you call it. That, that's not a block engine. You know, no, they run the Ford They run their engine. own, they do their own yeah, thing. You can either yeah. choose to use your own engine. Yeah. Or you can use the Toker engine. Okay. You can't run a B, you can't run a Ford engine in a BMW, let's say. No, I've no, asked. no, no. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. Yeah, I have asked. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, no, but I've had, I actually brought my engineer across from I used to race in a Honda, and you know we made that car a really good package. Yeah. It's a really strong package, and I brought my engineer across in 2019 to come and help me with the VW, mm. and we almost bolted on my Honda setup to my VW. I'm like, oh, here yeah, we go. It's, it's all the answers. Yeah. It's the magic. And I rolled it out, and I think I arrived backwards at the ambulance at Croft, at Barcroft. Yeah. So I was like, that's not going to work, is it? Mm. That's definitely not going to work with this car. And, you know, the same with the Cooper. We tried it with this, and it's a lot closer to what a Civic used to be like. Yeah, yeah. But every car is fundamentally a little bit different, you know, the cage stiffness and things like that. So they, it's stock parts, but you can put them together in a lot of different ways. So it makes it exciting, but 
also very close and competitive. Yeah, but that, that would also pull pull the best out in the teams. That's where the teams have got to be even sharper, really, because you're not you can't find the advantages in the other areas. You've actually got to find it in the detail, or you know, of what, how you set your car up and all the rest. You need a yeah. good engineer for that. We well, go back to I Dick mean, this Bennett is somebody as well. Dick, exactly. Yeah. Because somebody like Dicky would, yeah, would, yeah. would be yeah. really great with that. Yeah. Because he would know exactly what he did yeah. before to yeah. replicate it again, if you like. Yeah, so. I, th I think it's so key. You know, it's not just a one-person thing. No. You know, in in this championship, it is so close and competitive. There's, I would say, 20 drivers on the grid that can win races this year. Yeah, well, it's ridiculous. There is. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so you know, you've got that. to do all your little bits right as a driver. Yeah. But you need to know that your number one, number two, number three on the car yeah. are going to be at 100%, as is the engineer, as is the team manager. And you're bringing it all together and, you know, it's making a team within a team almost. And making sure you all yeah. gel and you know work as one, and that's key. Well, it, it is that attention to detail, really. It would seem with these cars, and yeah. you've got to be on it all yeah. the time. So one thing as well, we were talking before we went on air was actually how hard you have to work to get sponsors and things. And it was interesting that Gary came up with a point that actually still, even back in the 90s, because people yeah, had rose-tinted spectacles about how it was in the 90s. Yeah, they still do. Still the drivers had to work and get a budget you together. You still had to get yourself to a point where somebody was going to pay you some wages. Yeah. 100%, yeah. yeah. And even then it would be, you know, especially with me in Italy, you know, I, I, they gave me my contract and saw what I was going to get paid. Well, I didn't actually get that, because clearly somebody else got half of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't ask, you know. It's probably Alan Gow. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, I missed yeah. the pay section of my contract. I must have missed that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was, it was, that's how it was. But it I mean, so by, I, I know that your dad, Alan, works really hard doing all your hospitality side, which yeah. unfortunately at the moment we can't, we can't have at there. We've had fans back now at Sneston. But I mean, it's, it's a big family involvement to, to keep you on the grid and work with your sponsors, make sure they get value for money as well, so you can keep the whole thing rolling yeah i mean massively it's always been a family thing for me i mean mm. you said you didn't do karting but i started when i was six years old and um, it was me and my dad in the back of his builder's van it wasn't glamorous we slept on an airbed in my race suit condensation dripping on your head in the evening you yeah, know it's a good way to start, you know, serve an apprenticeship and you need to you yeah need to, you need to rough it a little bit yeah exactly i mean we still work hard like you say it's it's not easy it's never easy to get the budgets together but i'm very fortunate that i've got some brilliant sponsors as you can see on my car in the background that Year on year, even through last year, you know, with the global pandemic going on, they sort of stood by me and, you know, they kept me going because without them, I'm not just saying it, I wouldn't be on the track. You know, it's not just my sponsors, it's, it's uh, Tony at Team Hard sponsors as well. You know, it's, it's a massive group thing. It's not cheap. You know, in football, you can buy some football boots and go out and practice. Yeah. We have to go and buy tyres, you know, as a team manager, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, I definitely, you know yeah. the budget's more than well, me. Well, yeah, probably. testing was as expensive as going to a race meeting. Yeah, you, yeah. you spend the same money, pretty much. Especially when you crash the car. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Gab well, that's quite a good thing. They do restrict the testing, so you yeah. can't. Otherwise, people would just endlessly test. Right? Yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the ones with the big budget. You don't go testing with Gavin Piper, that's for sure. When they drove for me. I work with Gavin quite a bit. Yeah. You got some inside knowledge. Yeah, I can definitely not on camera. Really? <laughs> tell me afterwards, because I'll message him I'll afterwards tell you and afterwards give him some abuse. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, the boy was lightning. Yeah. There's no question that he was, and I feel really sorry because I had a. When I had the touring car team, he was in the box, so and Gav could have won the privateers. The boy was good, <coughs> but we we ran out of money. Yeah. And I can remember my accountant saying, uh, "Are you in love with Gavin Pye?" <laughs> went, no. He said, "Stop mortgaging your house and putting it into the racing team." Because Gav didn't have the budget. He never. Yeah. He's never had. His mum and dad helped him a lot, but you know they're not massively wealthy, so he yeah. always had to try and find it. But the boy was quick, and Tom Ferrier, who clearly yeah. is, is a bit of a star at the moment with his with his WAC team. Yeah. But Gav was blindingly fast. It's the same though, same. We could have kept side. him in it, you know. Yeah. Well we couldn't keep him in it. Yeah, my, my mum and dad cashed their pension in for my first race car. Yeah. That was a, a Formula Ford. Um as a ninety four Swift, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And I was Frank at Bradley. Silver, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was at uh, Silverstone Motorsport <laughs> College at the time doing a motorsport uh, engineering course and I took it to the uh, the college and we'd work on it after hours and That's it. that was the grand plan, you know, real rebuild it and go racing and I think we did half a test day and the clutch blew up and then we did half a day and then the engine blew up and I think that was about that was the end done. of mum and dad's pension. So I'll be uh, yeah. paying them back for the rest of my life for that one, no doubt. But yeah, it is a massive family thing, isn't it? You know, it's it, hard it really is. I mean, my dad, you know, put, put a lot of money into my career to get me to a point, if you like, where somebody would give me some wages or pay me some wages. But yeah, you've got to have it. Well, I had to go and you work know. for my dad as a painter and decorator to earn yeah. my wages, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I ain't got a bed for that either. You could, you could be still painting those those walls for a few years to come to paint. Yeah, 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 I'm I just think, doing my own yeah, house now. There'd be, a, <laughs> there'd be a fair amount of painting to be done, definitely. But what about, also it must be quite hard, do you have brothers and sisters and stuff? 
Luckily, I didn't have a brother. Right. I wanted to go racing. She got a sister. I had a sister, yeah. She did sort of dance and things like that. Yeah. Which is far cheaper it is. than motorsport, which I was very thankful for yeah. because... I got uh, mum and dad's pension for the uh, motorsport side of things. Yeah, because obviously, you know, in a family thing, because I got a sister and clearly my dad put a few bob in to me and all the rest yeah. of it. And it, there, you, you, you are aware of that because it puts extra pressure on yeah. on you as a driver anyway that, you you know, you've got to actually do it. And yeah. clearly, you know, my sister wasn't wasn't racing. You know, she was doing something else. I mean, she did get all of his money in the end in the inheritance. But well, <laughs> <laughs> you spent your half. Yeah. And, 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 and on that <laughs> note, on that, on that yeah. bombshell, yeah, yeah, <laughs> join, join us after the break and we'll have Matt Stat here with all his facts and figures, something on these guys as well, but also on the British touring car season. See you after the break. Welcome back to the Pitch BTCC show. This is the segment of the show where we are joined by Matt Salisbury from Inside BTCC. He has all the stats you'd ever want of British touring cars and a lots that you probably don't want. So Matt, tell us what you know from the races at Snetterton last weekend. Well, there was a few things that came up at uh, Snetterton, a bit like at Thruxton. First off, qualifying. So. It was two-part qualifying session. It was Gordon Shedden who put his car on pole. Unfortunately, then he lost pole position and it went to Colin Turkington. So it means Colin gets the honour of scoring the 90th pole in the BTCC field for an NGTC car. Followed that up, of course, with a victory in race one. That was his 57th career win. And that moves him a little bit closer in the uh, overall records to Andy Rouse. He scored 60 wins, so he's only three behind now. Um, only Jason Plato and Matt Neal have more than that. And, of course, Andy is a former teammate and team boss to one of your guests in the studio there. So I'm sure uh, Gary's got a few stories he could tell you about that. Well, that's right. Well, Andy Rouse was obviously your teammate back in the Super Touring days and uh, we famously gave you a, a telling it, off. Well, he, he's given you a lot of telling off, but he also gave me an opportunity yeah, as yeah, well, which yeah, was yeah. great, which led in, obviously, to the Italian... Um, he said he's got all the stats, but he hasn't got any on me, so... No, that's what I think <laughs> I'm the, the problem, We did ask about that, Matt, if he had any stats for Gary, but he's pre the internet, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's it's right. Like pre the yeah, internet, pre old, the internet yeah. doesn't exist, yeah. Matt, does it? No, that's right. Well, it's, it's, it's in Italy anyway, so... Yeah. But, but, <laughs> no, but but, they've only just got broadband. Yeah, they have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sorry for all the Italians. I, I'm joking, Matt. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm old. <laughs> uh, so, yes, but Andy obviously gave me an opportunity, but... Um, Quite a man to deal with, actually, and a very clever engineer. You know, he had it all worked out. Yeah, yeah. No, and no, he was quick stuff. as well. Good stuff. Yeah. So, so what else have you got for us, Matt? Well, obviously, the uh, other two wins that weekend went to Ash Sutton and Tom Ingram. Now, for Ash Sutton, that was his 21st career win in the championship, so it moves him up to 15th on the all-time winners list alongside Ricard Rydell. It was the first win for the Infinity at Snetterton, and it puts him joint fifth in the list of winners at Snetterton in the past. So uh, three records in one goal for Ash there. Well, we were talking before the show about Ash Sutton because he's a fantastic talent. And I spoke to lots of the fans who came to Snetterton. And to be honest with you, I think about 90% of them are Ash Sutton fans. But I was chatting to the guys earlier and they were picking out some points about how the car is so strong. I mean, Jack, you, you were saying that you you raced against, you had you had him behind you, I think, one of the races for, for a while. It just seemed to have a huge amount of mid-corner grip with the Infinity. Yeah, I mean, I've raced against Ash in various cars and quite annoyingly, he's fast in most things he drives. Um, you know, the Subaru actually at Snetterton in 17 and 18, me and Ash were battling for the lead. And 17, he beat me by about a car's length. And I think in 18, I beat him by a car's length. So we were one all. But it's fair to say this weekend, yeah, I just about saw him in race two and race three uh, in a distance. But car-wise, it's mid-corner grip. I think that he's got, you know, it's, he doesn't necessarily have to get fully to the apex, but he still gets the rotation in the car and obviously the grip of the rear wheel drive car off corners. So, I mean, that's where it is, up. isn't it? That's where, that's where as a racing driver, it's not really the quick corners where you need, you know, the big balls, because we can all have that. Yeah. It's, well, some of us bigger than others, but um, <laughs> it, it, it is a slow, medium speed corners where I, I remember Johnny Herbert going back, because I'm so old, you know, but Johnny was so good in that first part of the corner. The speed that he could carry, if you like, first what well, middle of the corner, the speed he could carry in the middle of the corner, and that's where it's at. I think especially get, with these cars, if you get your car working right there, because clearly you can pull it out of the corner as well. Yeah. If you're all over the place and it's all untidy there, that forget it. 
but I watched his car and it, and it, it had some, they got it set up to pull off the corner real well. He gets the cut back on people, yeah. like you say, it's with these NGTC cars now, since especially went to the bigger wheels and bigger tyres, um, the mid corner speed is so key. Yeah, you know, it's getting off the brakes and carrying momentum into the corner yeah. and not scrubbing speed. And that Infinity seems to do it so, so well. He can come off the brakes, roll speed roll it in. in. He picks the throttle up real quick as well. So early. He? Yeah. So early. And that's how he has to get back and underneath people all the time. And, you know, we're, we're scratching our heads trying to figure out what we can do to try and improve our uh, mid corner rotation. Obviously, it's a bit different with us being front wheel drive. It's almost all in reverse, but um, I think that is the key thing, like you say. It must be, there must be a little bit of it in his DNA as well. He's clearly quite good there yeah, as well, yeah. because whatever he drives, he seems to yeah. be pretty good at that part. It was good for yeah. me watching race three when you had Ash against Gordon Shedden, which was actually two, I would probably say, two of the hardest chargers. I would say one of the, the two of the people who don't give a quarter to anybody yeah. and there's always lots of contact involved. I, I think I, I was interested to see that I thought Ash actually had maybe learnt, you know, because he gave himself a lot of pressure last year. Um, he is aggressive, but he's, yeah. a, he's an aggressive in, in, in the right way because yeah. people around him go, yeah, I'm, he, he ain't going to mess about. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And yeah, Giovinardi yeah. was exactly the same. Giovinardi wouldn't punt you off deliberately, but you, you, he, he had this thing about him and Ash seems to have a little bit of that at the moment. Yeah. That he's coming. And Collard. I'm, I'm coming, well, yeah. Rob. Collard was, even when he was my teammate at WSR, yeah. I used to look in my mirror and go, oh, oh no. no. Not Rob, <laughs> yeah. of all people who yeah. don't want to race against him. And he forgot I was his teammate. Yeah, he Once would, the helmet he, went on, on, he wouldn't care. No. Yeah, he's a lovely guy, but when he put the helmet on, you know, he's an out and out racer. And say, he's probably the same as Ash. You know, I'd say yeah. he's one of the best racers on the grid. And yeah. Some people give give that out, you know, when you like you say, when you see him in the mirror. Or I remember when I used to see Giovanardi in the mirror, I go, wait, it's only a question of time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Before you've got a front bumper on your rear bumper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's clearly going to have a go. If, if you're lucky. lucky. Or inside door. Or coming <laughs> in the door, yeah, he's clearly coming. You know, but. That's good stuff. So, Matt, what else have you got for us? Well, moving on to race three, um, big win that one for Tom Ingram and for Accelerate because they'd never won in the championship before. So, obviously, that win for Tom, first win for Accelerate and a first win for the Hyundai i30 Fastback N. Particularly good for the team because Snetterton's their home circuit. They're not too far away. So, that was the 31st manufacturer to win in the championship. Of course, it's a, it's a privateer programme, but you know, in terms of which makes have won the 31st one. And a double podium for Tom across the weekend means the Hyundai in two rounds has now scored more podiums this season than it managed last season. Well, I think Tom was one of the real stars of the weekend, really. He scored a huge amount of points. But also, I think it was really impressive that the team have won a race so quickly. So that's Accelerate, who are only coming to the series two years ago. Um, and they, I spoke to uh, Justina Williams, who runs the team. Um, and she, I, I loved it. She had so much emotion after the race. Mm. She had tears in her eyes about winning the race. And as a team boss, I'm sure you you know that that's you know that it, that's what it's all about. That's yeah. why you you bother to do the job in the first place. Yeah, it absolutely is. You give it everything, don't you? You know when you know when you see your driver win a race, as we did with Gavin. You know, and I had a lot of drivers. I mean, some of them, you know, they really shouldn't be there. <clears throat> you know, just say because their dads would always say they're the best. You know, just you say just buy him a house. <laughs> you know, or a boat, <laughs> or a boat, because you know it's not really for him, you know. But in the nicest possible way, and then people that would accept that they're just there for, to enjoy it, if you like, the ones that are paying, and then that's fine. But um, but yeah, no, when we used to win with Gav, it was it was great, yeah, because it meant a lot. It meant a lot to him and his family as well, you know. So and we brought the alphas over, so the alphas were a bit tricky. When yeah. I, so last year, I remember when you had your was it last year? It was last year we had the win at Silverstone. Yeah, it was 19. 19. Sorry, I pretend it was last year as well. Yeah, that's right. Last year, yeah, but yeah. I, but yeah, I remember, and again, it was the first win for Team Hard. Uh, an, an inspired choice on tyres, I think, was, was the big thing. But I think you only had a small window to, to look out your window and things like that. But you could see the passion from the team and also yourself because, I mean, obviously, it, it, was, it, it came out of nowhere, really, compared to your performance on the day. But that, that's what it's all about, the driver and team working together to make the right decisions. It is that, yeah. And... You know, as a driver, you never get bored of winning races. You never do. No. That feeling. And it meant loads to me. But actually, when I watched the footage back and what I saw, it meant to the team, the sponsors. You know, Team Hard is a family team. You know, it really is. The core is a family team. And to see what it meant to all of those people after all the years of hard work they'd put in, it made it worth so much more to me. And 
it was special. I think even Tony Gillen may have had a little tear in his eye. But yeah, it, it's, yeah. it is a, it's a very emotional sport and it's a team sport. But actually going back to Tom Ingram, Accelerate and actually yourself as well, We've all been with Marvin Humphreys and Sandra. Yeah, but you know, Marvin's now at Accelerate. Of course, yeah. And, you know, that's, he's yeah, there, he's there. He? yeah. So he ah, is okay. Tom's team manager as such. And they're lovely people. They're, it's a family Ooh. thing, you know. Yeah. I, I still see Marvin and Sandra as my like mum and dad of motorsports. Yeah, he, so he, he helped me a lot. Yeah. The, yeah, the whole good. lot. Yeah, yeah, he's a lovely man. So what else have you got in your bag of goodies, Matt? Well, you, um, you kind of said there, Ingram winning that race, great for Accelerate, that first win. The car itself is actually stacking up really well against the other NGTC cars on the grid so far. Now, of course, his chassis only had two race meetings, so it's only had six starts. But at the moment, he's scoring points at 13 points a race, and there's only two cars on the grid that really compare to that at the moment. Ash Sutton's Infinity, 13.03, so slightly ahead. Of course, that's now got a season of racing under its belt. And Colin Turkington's BMW, that's managing 11.6 points a race. All three of those cars also, um, and drivers, also hit uh, some landmarks in terms of the laps that they led at the weekend. So Colin Turkington, he's now led 650 laps in an NGTC car. He passed that because he led in, uh, obviously, race one in winning, but also in race two. Ash Sutton's Infinity hit 100 laps led in the championship in the second race. And then Ingram passed 350 laps led in his career in the final race in winning that one. Well, the interesting thing for me about that, Matt, is that this formula is a driver's formula. You have to have a good driver to get the results because you're talking about the cars getting the, the results, but you can pick those three drivers, Ash Sutton, Colin Turkington and Tom Ingram. That, you know, I think you could put them in any race car and they'd be up the front. Yeah, well, it seems so. I mean, the cream always rises, doesn't it? Whatever, whatever you're driving, you know. So I remember, I keep going back to the old days, but I remember Mick, Mick, Mick Hacken, and I shouldn't keep going back because this is about you. And it must help I like your, the old days. Must I help, wasn't must, born then, must but help. I like the hearing about <laughs> it. Yeah, but you wasn't even born, yeah. <laughs> then, but is this another, maybe, maybe there's a twinkle in your eye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It could, it could, maybe, maybe, anyway. Well, but then, yeah, yeah, I'm a, no, I've got enough money. No. <laughs> um, but you, you put Mick Hacken in, it was, he was driving for, in a Formula 3, and, and the Reynard that year was particularly bad. But you put Micker in it, and he could still win a race. Mm. I mean, I struggled in it. Everybody else struggled in it, but Micker still could win a race. So I think the cream will always rise. Is what yeah, I'm it's saying. Adapted, isn't it? You know, you you will find it there. But yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I don't know what the modern touring car is like to drive. Whether you just come up against the wall because you need something else. I don't. I don't know. So I don't know. What There's it a little is. bit of that. Yeah. There is a little bit. Yeah. I mean. You get to a stage of development, you know, with the VWCC that we struggled with, and it didn't matter what we did, we just couldn't, couldn't get, get it to it, go yeah. any faster. You know, I say we could throw a thousand pounds stiffer spring at it, and it make no difference. No, okay. It wouldn't go slower or faster; it just was the same. Yeah. Um, whereas with this, we can do six damper clicks in the Cupra, and you feel it. Bang! It's a different straight away. There's two temps. Yeah. So you know, that's the nice thing as a driver and an engineer. You know, being able to work with something and see progress. That's great, Matt. Thanks very much for all your stats. I'm not sure we could stay here you all day. You didn't have any on, my, on me. Yeah, sorry, yeah, apart, apart from maybe the stats next time I'm when joking. Gary comes on. I'm joking, Matt. I'm oh, seriously. Don't worry about it. Yeah, with Gary, I might not have any BTCC stats on him, but he's got to be one of the few drivers who drove that Peugeot in the Super Touring days and actually managed to get a race win with it because it obviously never got any in Britain. So no. maybe it just needed to uh, race in Italy instead. Maybe that was just the place. Some sunshine. <laughs> yeah, I think something to do with the Michelin tyres helped. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that is another story for That's another brilliant. day. That's brilliant. Join us after the break when we're going to have some more stats, but also looking forward to Brands Hatch coming up next weekend and also some of the drivers who were out at Snetterton last weekend. Welcome back to the Pitch BTCC show. I'm here with Matt Salisbury from Inside BTCC, Gary Ailes, ex-British touring car driver and team owner, and Jack Goff, current superstar of the British Touring Car Championship. So Matt, have you got any stats from last weekend about the drivers who were on the grid at Snetterton? Yeah, there's a couple of uh, stats beyond the ones that we've mentioned already. Uh, Gordon Shedden, he picked up a bit of a landmark result. Race three, uh, 125th BTCC podium for Gordon, which was a good way to end what had been a, a pretty tough race day after his issue in qualifying. Uh, Tom Oliphant, he passed 500 points um, as well in his BMW. Now, of course, at Snetterton, we had two female drivers on the grid, and it's the first time that we've had that for quite a while. 
you'd have to go back to 2001 at Croft when we had Joanna Clark and Annie Templeton racing. Now they were in the production class, which Gary knows well, because he ran cars there when he first came into the championship as a team boss. Uh, but the production class was separate from the main touring cars, so they couldn't race for the overall championship. If you were looking at female drivers who were eligible for the title, you'd have to go all the way back to the 1980s and the Birmingham Super Prix. We had Netan Lindgren and Louise Aitken Walker. Louise is a bit more famous for her rallying exploits, but those two raced together on the streets of Birmingham. Louise did okay, she got 17th, but Netan unfortunately uh, had an engine problem, so she didn't manage to finish. Well, it's great to see the girls getting stuck into the British Touring Car Championship and definitely showing a, a few of the guys the way to go. But Gary, you raced against Tamara Vidali, was it, in yeah, Italian in Italy, Super Touring? Think, yeah, 92. There, she drove for Alfa Romeo uh, quick. <coughs> she was on the front row a couple of times, but she actually never made the first corner. I think right. Italians had a bit of a problem with the women racing <laughs> then, but uh, it's clearly moved on now. But I remember, yeah, she didn't, she didn't quite get to the first corner. Right, okay, and that was but, with the Alfa Romeo team. So who, yeah. who would have been her teammate then? She, he was, uh, I guess, well, she out-qualified Tarquini, I think. Right. I remember it was quite weird because it was unusual for, for women to be in motorsport then anyway, but the, especially in, in Italy. And um, they all came around and interviewed us and go, what do you think of this woman, you know, being on the front row? She was on pole, actually. She's proper quick. Um, for me, it's, it's nothing. But the Italians were like, hmm, yeah, I don't know about that, really. <laughs> <coughs> but no, she, she was a good driver, clearly, very quick. No, it's good stuff. And that, and so, that was back in, like I say, 92. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Because she, did she do 3,000 after that or before I don't know that? what she did. I don't know how, where her career took her after that. Right, right. But, um, but, yeah. No, that's great. So, Jack, did you have any experience at the weekend of racing against Jade or, or Jess, who were out there on the grid? Uh, I didn't, to be honest. I didn't actually come across them in practice or qualifying or any of the races. But, um, like you say, it's, it's great for the championship. Um, to bring women into the sport because obviously it opens up to a new audience. Um, hopefully more uh, younger children coming into sport, you know, lady racers coming in, you know, it, it's good for everybody. So, yeah, I think it's good. You know, it's, it's unlike other sports with football where it's obviously, it's separate. Um, with motorsport, everyone's got the same equipment. You know, you can go out there and you can do the same jobs any of the, the boys can do. So, yeah, I think it's well, good. Well, talk, talking about jobs that the boys can do, if you like. I, no, there, there are a, a lot of ladies, girls, Females, whatever you have to, you say, working on the cars as well. I, I know, know uh, Colin Turnton's number one mechanic uh, is is as a girl, um, and and it's great to see. I mean, there's lots of data engineers, there's lots of yeah, lots technicians. Of data engineers, isn't that? It's, yeah. it's it's really sort of opening the world up from that because I mean, I my, my my daughters, you know, helped out with the team who were grid girls and bits and pieces, right, yeah, and my, everybody's my got their opinion well. on grid girls as as yeah. is normally nowadays. But you know, at the end of the day, if people want to do it, as far as I'm concerned, it's their choice to, to do stuff and get involved. Really. My sister That's was a grid girl as well. Yeah. yeah so yeah. for Team Hard, who I race with now, mm. she worked on the grid with those guys. And like you said, we went back to Dick Bennett's and he wouldn't have a number one mechanic just as a lady just because, you know, it'd have to be someone who's very, very good at their job. And yeah, exactly. She's there yeah. on talent alone. So that's the most important yeah. thing. And I mean, that's the same with driving, engineering or mechanics. It's it's about talent and, you know... Yeah, it's about giving them the opportunity to show that they can do an equal job. Yeah. You know, yeah. what it is, because... Well, it's being there on merit, yeah. isn't it? Being yeah. there on merit. That's that's the yeah, important is, thing to, to focus on, yeah. really. The whole and I guess it's also, you know, making them aware that they can yeah, get yeah, involved yeah. if they yeah. want to get and involved. And as you said, young girls yeah. who are looking at coming there to the first British touring car race, they can see it on the telly or see from the side of the grid that the number one mechanic on Colin Turkin's car, that could be them in 20 years' time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my sister's got... Um, I think she's coming up five years old this year, and she's an absolute lunatic on a little mini electric car she's got going around the garden. Yeah. So I'm saying now, I would not want to be racing if she gets onto the grid, put it that way, because <laughs> I would not want to see her in my rear view mirror. She would be pushing <laughs> me straight on into the apex at turn two. So yeah, um, I, think, I think it's brilliant. It's good, yeah, you know, it's to open the doors. To diversify is, you know, is, no. is, is definitely the way it's, forward. As we know, with, you know, my son Jack owns Crawley Wasps, so the football team, which is all women football team. Yeah, yeah. So my granddaughter, Heidi, signed for Brighton, so she, place for Brighton so uh, you know I'm all for it really yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, great brilliant no no involved. no it's fantastic yeah. fantastic so Matt what else what else have we got looking forward to Brands Hatch maybe to, to to whet our appetites well we're going back to Brands Hatch and, and Brands Hatch is where it all started really for the British Touring Car Championship the first ever race in the series was held there back on the 7th of April 1958 there was two races 
because back in those days we had uh, split classes which ran through then till the 1980s and the start of the current two litre formula but that first race weekend it was Jack Season and Austin and Tommy Sopwith and a Jaguar who won and of course when we then got to the end of the season it was those two who were involved in that famous shootout to decide who would win the title. And, and that wasn't when you, so Gary wasn't involved in those stats. You managed, you managed to get stats from 1958, but yeah, didn't manage to get it from 1992. Yeah, cheers. Unfortunately <laughs> not. I mean, you know, 1958, were, were you there trackside watching then? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> moving on, <laughs> moving, moving on, yeah. so the guests don't walk out. It's on television, no, no. though, if he does walk out. Yeah, I wasn't actually born then. <laughs> Oh, no, it was, it was Sean I was referring to. I know. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, clearly, Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, good stuff. So then, so look at, and, and any, anything else from Brands Hatch that you can tell us about? Uh, well, Brands Hatch, we've got the most successful driver in terms of race wins is still on the grid. Jason Plato's got 25 of his wins at, uh, at Brands in the past. So he'll hope to kind of try and add to that because he didn't really have a very good weekend at Snetterton, did he? He had quite a few problems across the weekend with the uh, Vauxhall. And just touching on your other guest there, Jack, um, big weekend for him with the Cooper because it's uh, his home circuit home circuit for Team Hard and he'll want to keep his record of scoring points with the new car going this season and actually as well as you know scoring points in six races which is a good start um, he's scoring at about five and a half points a race at the moment so it's noticeably forwards from what he's done in the uh, last two seasons and you know get it into the top 10 reverse grid you never know what might happen. That's fantastic. Thanks very much, Matt, for all that insight. It's really interesting, and I'm sure there'll be lots more once we come back after Brands. So, at the last meeting at Snetterton, we had the Pitch BTCC Cup winner was Ash Sutton, voted for by the fans and who downloaded the Pitch BTCC app. So, thanks very much for everybody who voted and got their vote in. I've got to say, Ash Sutton seems to be a real favourite with the fans when I was going round interviewing the crowds at the weekend so uh, as well as being fast on track he's also a, a big favourite there they really liked his style quite aggressive I think guys I'm going to yeah. turn out some more hats or something aren't <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what I'm going to do get some yeah, freebies yeah, and start throwing yeah, them out you, you need to get out there amongst them <laughs> no that's right well you, you're always a big favourite whenever anybody talks about hey, somebody should be in a car I think it's always Jack Goff who's the, the biggest the biggest one on social media the fans are voting for I like to think of myself as like a normal guy I think that's the thing you know I, I'm a touring car fan that's, you know, deep down, I used to go to watch touring cars myself. So, you know, I am a touring car fan and I guess I come from a normal background. You know, I have to work hard to get out there on the grid and I think people maybe can relate to that. So, yeah, I'm very thankful for all the support. You know, it means a lot. And just touching on that, going back to Snetterton, it made such a difference. Just on in-laps mainly, seeing people, people on the banks. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. Just enjoying themselves, doing things mm. that they love to do. It's only 4,000 people, but it was so nice to see spectators back in at a sport event. No, it was a fantastic environment there, I think, as well. So that was good. We actually did quite a bit of few interviews with the fans that we're going to put up onto the Pitch BTCC app. And then also fans can also upload their own videos and ask their own questions to the drivers via the pit time graphic that Matt does a lot of filming at the weekend. But thanks very much, guys. It's been really interesting to see sort of two eras, if you like, yeah. of super touring back in the day that everybody has rose tinted spectacles about and also the current NGTC formula, both of you chatting. And there's quite a lot of you know similarity between the two, more than people who talk on the internet about it all the time. There's, there's a lot more no, that's, that, that's the same than yeah. is different. Yeah. But um, what I'd like to say, thanks very much for, for watching the programme with us today. Um, we'll be back after the next round at Brands Hatch. Look forward to seeing you there, but also make sure you download the Pitch BTCC app to get all the information, everything that's going on behind the scenes, and maybe upload one of your videos as well. Thanks very much and good night.